I've been putting off reviewing King's Loot Wallets for some time, but your pleas have finally moved me to act. And here we go. We have got the hybrid and the mini 3.0 we're looking at. So let's look at the packaging. This is really high quality and expensive packaging. I'll guarantee that the packaging is more than the actual wallet itself. Just because I know how much wallets cost to be manufactured in either China, India, or the Philippines. And so let's get to the hybrid and set this aside. Again, I love these boxes. I mean, I, I'm not criticizing them. Uh, they're really quite nice and they're Apple-esque. Let's take this tissue paper off. And this is the black color with the hybrid. It also comes in five other colors. Get a quick look here and see that uh, sewing is what you'd expect. I like that sewing around there. Make sure it doesn't tear out. Got their logo here in the front. Quick access card here. Open this up. Looks like we have a ID example right here. Take that out. Money clip. Fairly standard. Now for the Mini. Let's get this open. It has the same kind of box as we saw with the Hybrid. A very high quality, thick cardboard. Very Apple-esque. Let's tear this off and see if we can get the wallet. There we go. Very nice. Set this aside. This is Buckskin. It also comes in four other colors. We can tell this is the AirTag version, which we'll look at. And this is a very common design. We've seen this with the Schnell. We've seen this with uh, Distill Union. Uh, there are several others that uh, we've reviewed in the past that are very much like this. But regardless, very nice and simple. So now let's walk through both of these and see if they're everything they're made out to be. We've got a big card slot right here. Capacity up to 15 cards. We've got this pull strap for extraction. Cards push it back down into place when you put them back in. We have a tracker spot. This is for the air tag in particular. Actually, you can put uh, a tile sticker in here as well. That will also work slides into the top right here and then snaps into place. We'll show that. This front strap, this elastic, it not only holds the wallet together as you have cards that are put in here, but it's also the place where you put cash folded twice or in thirds. And finally, we have this key ring. You can attach keys or a lanyard, anything to this you'd like. Moving on to the hybrid. The hybrid here starts out with a quick access card slot here on the exterior. A little thumb push to get the cards out. Two to three cards, really. If we move to the interior, we have an ID slot here. This is plastic, little thumb push right in here, and then we've got three other card slots. We have one, two, and then a hidden one here at the top. We've seen this with other vendors before, uh, very common, and you've got another propaganda card in here, and so you have a pull strap to be able to take care of those. Let's put this back down really quick. And, of course, RFID lining all the way through this, and this is only a topper. If you go down further, you can see that uh, we, there is the material that's farther down into here. I'll get a flashlight and show you that. And then finally, we have a money clip. This is a standard spring-based money clip. It does come out, and once it starts to lose its spring, you just wind this back up, put it right back in, and away you go. And this has a capacity of 1 to 15 notes unfolded, so they all come in here just as a billfold pocket. The mini measure is 3.5 by 2.5 by about a half an inch, and the hybrid is 3.9 by 2.75 by 0.5. Look at the weights on these. Uh, the mini is 26 grams, and the hybrid is 56 grams, so very reasonable. Now, I have some disappointing news, so uh, let's keep going. Eighty thousand subscribers, two lucky people, five wallets of their choice from all that I have. Will you feed that thing? Remember, subscribe. Eighty thousand, we get there. It's done. The company recommends fifteen cards here for the mini, and up to twelve cards for the hybrid. Now, both are designed in the United States and then made in China. I can't find anywhere on their material or website where it's made, so I'm going to call it China. And declaring where your products are is kind of federal law. But anyway, uh, the smell indicates both are made from premium full grain leather, 
but, well, let's just say they both smell like chrome tanned leather. And we can tell that we do have an issue here with taller currencies, the yen and the larger euro just don't quite work as well in these particular wallets. Now, machine sewing, which is good, but is missing reinforcement in high stress areas that we might find right here uh, or over here in the top. But otherwise, this, the sewing is good, it does feel good, and it does operate uh, without any issues. Outside of that, I'm really not a fan of clear plastic. It tends to, to get yellow and crack over time, so that tells you this is not meant really to be a long-term wallet investment unless you really don't care that that happens. That said, they do have an impressive warranty, which I'll mention. The hybrid does have these rolled edges, which is very typical in large manufacturing runs of wallets. It's inexpensive and provides a slimmer profile. Now, the Money Clip is a standard spring-based model, like I mentioned, and uh, when it becomes weak, you just twist it, it gets strong, you put it back in, and there's really nothing unique about this. And then, of course, if we look at the Mini, this moves around a lot, quite often these, these will have some double-sided tape that goes on the interior here to kind of keep it from moving that much. And the Mini itself, again, very simple in design. Uh, you notice this popped out, it's because I didn't center this uh, properly in, in the holder as well as it could have been. From pricing, the Mini 3.0 is $89. The Mini 2.0, is $74. It does not have the tracker slot. And the hybrid is $79. With the Mini 3.0, I like how this operates. The design is common. We see this with others, like I mentioned, Chanel Atlas, the Micro uh, from Distill Union. The tracker holder is a proven design seen on many wallets as well. And with the top exposed, uh, right here, you're able to get greater access to cards, of course, and with the top exposed here, you're able to get the car, the tracker in and out easily. You know, in and out yeah, might be something that's important to you by way of ease of use. Some wallets are more difficult than others. One thing I like is this elastic is very strong. I put this cash back in here. This cash uh, does not move around on its own. I mean, it, it is in here and you've got to grab it to pull it out. I like that. We like the strength that we have here and that's provided by what we see with the cards. Now, if we take the cards out and let's say you want to just do one card and an ID, then we have strength in this elastic to where there is no movement in cards. Uh, cards are not going to come out of here. And the other thing I like is that we have full coverage of cards. So you can push your cards all the way down and you have the corners of this wallet which completely cover the cards. One thing about the AirTag or the tracker slot here is if you lose interest in these trackers and you don't want to carry them anymore, well, you're left with this big gaping hole here. This thing you saw in the beginning. These are fairly easy to get out when you're you don't want to use them anymore, so you've got this big gaping hole. I mean, uh, for how much you're paying, this mini is quite expensive. You'll you'll have a, a bit to think about if you want to invest in this and then all of a sudden lose interest here. The hybrid, the quick access slot here in the front is really quite nice. I put two cards in here. Uh, it works just fine. You can get in, in and out. Uh, of course, you've got quick access here, thumb pulls. I mean, there, you know, access to cards is really good. And then you have this archive location right here where you can put lesser used cards and then pull them out with a pull strap. I like that. Here's my final assessment. What I find is that King's Loop products fall into the same quality standard and configuration setups as brands like Andar, Brecker Hyde, Sermon Brands, or Trivando, but are two times more expensive. So nothing spectacular or even genuinely unique when compared. That said, King's Loot does provide an interesting lifetime replacement guarantee warranty. You must create an account, fill out a form, and then they'll let you know if, they, if you qualify. Now, I created an account and I tried to do a warranty claim or start a return, and both pages gave me a 404. They just didn't load. Or if you want a different wallet or new wallet, if you're an existing customer, you can pay $19.97, which pays for outbound and inbound shipping. Now, since these wallets usually cost $2 to $5 to manufacture, trust me, they're not losing money on the deal. With all that said, now you have everything you need to know to make a good decision. Now on to the final score. For the Mini 3.0, quality of 3, price of 1, that's very expensive, features of 3, usability of 4, and perception of 4. That gives us a final score of 30 out of 50. Now the hybrid, quality of 3, price of 1, still really expensive what you get. Features of 3, usability of 3, and perception of 4. And that gives us a final score of 28 out of 50. And there you have it. If you found this video interesting, then watch this one next. And we'll see you in the next review. Bye.